afterwards and a killer view of Sunset Boulevard. Pretty sick, Brad said enthusiastically. Whoa, back up. What are you doing in my office? You said you were looking for an intern last night, someone to help you develop your new artist, Macy Gray? Oh yeah, you were the one who liked her demo. I remember the hair now, I chuckled. You're lucky. I wasn't even going to come in till much later today. You would have missed me. I contemplated his mop of curly brown hair. Through my thudding headache, I remembered he actually made some intelligent comments about Macy's music. Hey, you're still sitting in my chair. Get up, I said jokingly. We began picking up the CDs, and he said, I was really inspired by your lecture, Mr. Blue. You can call me Jeff. Mr. Blue is my dad, I said jokingly. He proceeded to tell me about growing up in Agura, California, his upbringing, and his love for Metallica. His parents were pushing him into law school, but he wanted a career in music. Man, I've been there, I laughed. Here's some free advice. Whatever you do, don't go to law school unless you're absolutely dying to be miserable. He looked me up and down in my blue jeans and white t-shirt. You get to dress like that every day? Well, it is the music business, and I save a ton on dry cleaning compared to lawyers, I said as he glanced at my walls. That's a perk. So, what do you look for when you're signing an artist? He asked. Well, that's the million dollar question, I said. I look for identity, authenticity, an iconic voice, hit songs, and of course, talent. But the difference between the most talented people and the superstars is that the superstars are hungrier. They work harder and they can deal with rejection. They'll do whatever it takes. That's who I want to work with. Well, I definitely have the drive. He studied the corn plaque on my wall and then pointed to a poster of Limp Biscuit. He rolled his eyes. I'm going to create a band that blows them away. You'll see. Slow your roll. You're not even my intern yet and you're already dissing my bands? Plus, I've never heard of an internship turning into a record deal. I laughed. Just then, Stephanie buzzed. You got some messages this morning from UCLA students about the internship. You want to set up some interviews? I glanced at the phone and then back at Brad. He was holding my electric guitar. I saw a lot of myself in this kid. At the same time, across town in Pasadena, a talented artist named Mike Shinoda was scribbling rap lyrics in his notebook, dreaming of taking his art to a new level. 400 miles away, in Phoenix, Arizona, a skinny kid named Chester Bennington was getting inked with an exploding atom bomb tattoo on his back. Not knowing what the universe was aligning at that moment, I replied, Tell him it's filled, please. Brad looked up from picking out a melody on the guitar, and he smiled. It was clear to me that he could play, and that there was something special about him. It wasn't just his drive, intelligence, and extreme confidence. Something in my mind said, this kid is a star. At that moment, we both knew my new intern was already in front of me. However, no one could have predicted where it would lead. Chapter 2. Follow Your Gut it was early November 1997. I had just convinced Zamba Music Publishing to take a chance on Macy Gray, even though she had been dropped by her manager, her publisher, and her record label. I was certain she had the talent to be a star, but the music industry can be unforgiving. Once you're dropped, there's a stigma attached that's nearly impossible to overcome. I had my head in my hands when Brad came in. What's wrong? Brad asked. I'm just having a hard time getting A&R people to give Macy a chance. I'm trying to understand exactly what you do, he said. It seems like publishing is a lot like A&R, but it really isn't. Well, that's an accurate yet ambiguous statement, Brad. Maybe you should go to law school after all, I laughed. Here's your pop internship quiz. Tell me the difference between my job as a manager of creative at a publishing company compared to an A&R exec at a record label. Brad pursed his lips. Don't give me shit if I get this wrong, but the way I see it, your job as a publisher is to sign bands or artists, acquire a percentage of their copyright or ownership in the songs, register the songs with performance rights organizations such as BMI or ASCAP, collect royalties for performance and mechanicals, which are the sales of the physical album, get placements for the songs in film and TV for fees, which is called synchronization or sync licenses, and sometimes do development deals for artists who don't have any income stream for their songs yet. Ha! That's really good. I see you've been studying my UCLA lecture syllabus. Or you're reading off a cheat sheet right now, I said. To clarify, the publisher's job is not just to sign the bands, but to sign the songwriters of the songs that the artist or band records and releases.